I'm taking this one with Lukaku and I am trusting myself and going top corner and that's a banging penalty guys let's go here we go with Musa Diaby Alexis Sanchez could be on the run here go on Sanchez oh brilliantly done Alexis Sanchez left foot oh my god Alexis Sanchez with one of the best goals we've scored The title race is on in this Serie A with AC Milan still being unbeaten in the league with a point off them, Juventus on the same points, Torino as well. Things are getting heated in the Serie A. We've got some pretty exciting fixtures in the Serie A. Atalanta at home is going to be fun, Roma away and let's not forget Real Madrid away in the Champions League. Now we beat them last episode. Can we do it again? We'll find out. And also in this episode, we'll discuss the possibility of bringing back a certain Brazilian to Inter Milan. Should be fun. Now I know I kind of have been inconsistent with this series in the last few days or so, but allow it guys, it's January, I do need a bit of a break, but for the next few days, four to five days at the very least, you guys will be getting the Inter Milan career mode episodes on the daily, so stay tuned for that. If you're enjoying this series, drop like on the video, subscribe if you're new around here, and let's get things underway. Press conference to kick off the episode, put DRB on a development plan that upgrades his weak foot. I don't even know why I didn't do this before, because we absolutely should have. He's on a two-star weak foot, we've got to improve that, so... As of now, I'm putting him on an inverted wide midfielder plan that boosts his weak foot up pretty quickly. So, I'm hoping that'll come into effect very soon. We can't deal with a winger with like a two-star weak foot. That is just not good enough. So, we are training that. Next up, recall Jean Mario because the midfield needs improvement since you're unsure of some of the players' future at your club. Well, honestly, that's not the reason I want Jean Mario back. The reason is simple. Vidal is out for the next seven months and we need more squad depth. With us being only allowed to make one signing in the upcoming winter transfer window, having Ja Mario at the squad will be vital. He's in his prime, he's at a high rating as well. It has to happen. We recall Lazaro to replace Perisic in the squad, at least temporarily. And I think we should do the same for Ja Mario. In fact, we're going to do the same for Ja Mario. And he's going to be like another new signing for us in this series. Now, I'm sure when we started this series, the thought of bringing back Felipe Coutinho crossed your mind. In his early days, he did play for Inter Milan and was really good for them. Of course, then securing his big move to Liverpool. But bringing him back to Inter Milan to try and revive his career because at Barca things just aren't working out for him. I feel like this is a realistic signing as well with Eriksen potentially leaving in January because yeah I feel like it's realistic to do so. Coutinho could be the man to fill that void and honestly a player with his creative ability in behind the likes of Lukaku and Lautaro. Oh my god would that be insane. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think about this. The only problem I have with this transfer is that since we're allowed to make only one transfer in the winter market, spending that on a player like Coutinho, who we may not need as such, I don't know man, I really don't know. But if Eriksen sells, Coutinho I think should be a must buy. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comment section. A big question for today's episode. Felipe Coutinho, do we consider this or not? With that press conference done, let's move on. Romelu Lukaku continues to perform for us in this series. Last episode, he scored a ton of goals and the partnership of Lukaku and Lautaro is just unbelievable up top. Last episode though, it was Lukaku who shined and well, he picks up the player of the episode award. Okay guys, it's now time to recall Jao Mario from his loan spell. Oh, this is expensive, 1.2 million for that, but... I think it's going to be worth it. Just look at the stats he's got. Very well balanced in a lot of departments. He's going to add so much to our midfield whenever we do play him. And with the injury of Arturo Vidal, he's going to get a chance. I think we'll do it this way, guys, for recalling players from their loan spell. Let's say we get a major injury to one of our players. We're allowed to, like, recall a player in that very same position from their loan spell. We'll do it that way. So, for now, we're not going to be making any more, you know, recalling loan players or anything of that sort. We've done it with Jean Mario. We've done it with Lozaro out of desperation and we're going to keep it that way. The challenge for today is selected by you guys. Revenge is sweet. Score with Hakimi against Real Madrid. This should be a fun challenge. I'm definitely going to give it a go and we'll see what happens. Also, there is no forfeit for this challenge. You guys need to let me know your forfeits every time you select a challenge. So, of course, we'll have something, you know, to play for, you know, for that objective. So, again, next episode, let me know. Okay, so our fixture schedule for the next few days or so is pretty tight. We've got Genoa away now. A couple of days later, Atalanta. A couple of days later, Real Madrid. And finally, after that, we get a bit of a break. So, 
We're gonna have to manage our squad really well in this next week or so. I'm gonna use my first team here against Genoa and sim this one. I reckon we should, should get the win here, especially with the first team in charge. And wow, we absolutely blow them out of the water with a 4-0 win. Who scored for us? Hakimi, Barella, Lukaku and Lautaro. So, the complete performance here. I am making a fair few changes for this one against Atalanta, especially since we have Real Madrid coming up in like a couple of days. But it's still a strong team. Lukaku starts for us. Ja Mario makes his first start in his Inter career. We've got Skriniar at the back, Brozovic starting. I'm resting Hakimi because I need him against Madrid. But looking at the Atalanta team, they're playing a different three at the back formation. In fact, it's similar to us, but they've got like four wingers playing, which is pretty interesting. Ilicic up top, Alejandro Gomez starting. Those two are probably the danger men of their side, but look at their team, guys. A lot of fitness issues, whereas we don't have many, so... That's an advantage for us. Let's get into this one and bag another win in the Serie A. I'm honestly very curious to face Atalanta in this series because they're such a different team in the Serie A. Very, very attacking, which is normally not associated with Italian sides. They've been amazing in the Champions League recently and Ilicic has been unbelievable. So we'll see how they approach this game. And also, Ja Mario. Let's hope he can have a good start to his Inter Milan career. Alexis Sanchez, who's seemingly trying to rebuild his career here at Inter Milan as he tries to get past one. Sanchez with a scoop pass for Lukaku. Lukaku, <laughs> what's he done there? My god. That's an attack gone. Oh, Skriniar strong at the back there and could result in a chance for us as he fires this one for Diaby. Here goes Musa Diaby now. Chance for him to score. Oh, goes for goal and scores Musa Diaby. Fantastic. But I think we need to give a lot of credit to Skriniar there. Just the way he got won the ball from deep as the centre back and pushed forward as well, driving the ball forward and the pass as well from him was as good as any midfielder from our team. Unreal scenes as Moussa Diaby scores a phenomenal goal there for us as Inter Milan make it 1-0 against Atalanta. Just what we needed, guys, because, yeah, Atalanta are a very tricky team. I do not want to go 1-0 down to them. So I'm super glad we've made it 1-0. Let's now push on and try and get three points here. Oh, that's a chance for Atalanta. Out of nowhere, guys, the ball just was floated into the box. There was no build-up from Atalanta here. This was Route 1 football which I don't think you associate with them, but Malinowski controlled it so well in the box and just fired that one in. And our keeper couldn't save it. Handanovic, you expect him to like... To be fair, that was just an outrageous goal. I mean, look at that for a shot. Bang. Like, you really can't do much about it. It's 1-1 against Atalanta and well, game on. I need Jamario to make that run inside. He kind of stopped that run, but Lazaro has made a good run. Yeah, big chance for him. Oh, Lazaro. Oh, that is... That is one of the most lethal finishes. You'll see the keeper didn't even move for that. And Lazaro, Valentino Lazaro gets his first goal in an Inter Milan shirt after, after being recalled from his loan spell. That's a big moment for him. And also, it was Jao Mario who assisted him. So, the two players who are kind of like our new signings combine to give us the lead here against Atalanta. Awesome to see what a finish from Lazaro that was. He put his foot right through that one. The keeper was just standing still. A brilliant goal to put us 2-1 up against Atalanta. Let's go. Atalanta on the attack yet again. Lazaro doing some defensive work. Barella trying to get that one away. Can't. Pasalic on the ball. Oh, good challenge right there from Kolarov. But struggles to get it away. There's a lot of pressure from Atalanta. Now it's Ilicic on the ball. Skriniar with a strong, strong interception. Oh, this has been difficult. Atalanta, man, when they put pressure on you, they're very difficult to deal with. But that means on the break... We've now got a chance here with Lazaro. Could whip in across for Romelu Lukaku. On the volley, he converts that brilliantly. Big Rom with a fantastic goal. I was, I was expecting him to take a header to score that. But he just put, a, put his foot right through it again. A volley. And it's 3-1 for Inter Milan. We're, we're looking very likely now to take all three points home here. And this was completely on the break. Atalanta were pressurizing us. We were able to hit them on the break. Lazaro was superb. Once again down the right flank. And... Romelu Lukaku gets the job done yet again. Another goal for the Belgian striker. 3-1 up against Atalanta. Probably the right time to make some changes. I'm going to bring on Vecino for, of course, Varela. We'll also bring on maybe Lautaro for Lukaku. Just giving Lukaku a bit of a rest before the big game against Madrid. That seems like a good plan. I kind of want to bring on someone for Diaby. But uh, I think we'll, uh, we'll bring on Hakimi and do this. Okay, for now, I think that should work. Oh, I'm just whipping that one for Hakimi. And that is one of the best through balls you'll see in this series. Hakimi looking for that cross in. Alexis, no, it's Lautaro with the shot. But the keeper somehow made a save there. That was one of the best passes I've seen that was made to Hakimi. Like, 
How did our player pull that off? It was stunning, but we really should have scored from that. That would have made it a, a hell of a lot better. Good pass for Lautaro. Martinez has broken through the defensive line. Could be a goal for Lautaro. That's a simple finish. When Lautaro gets in behind a defense, the aggression he scored, the finishing, the composure, all of that at display here as Lautaro makes it 4-1. A convincing win now for us against Atalanta. What a performance from Inter Milan. Just what you want to see, guys as we take the pressure to the likes of AC Milan and Juventus. Come on! Honestly, that was a satisfying performance. We completely destroyed Atalanta. The way we attacked in this game, it was unplayable. A really good win for us in the Serie A. Look at this, guys. Valentino Lazaro appreciates the game time he's getting. I told you, man, recalling him back from his loan spell was the play. And it's awesome that, you know, he's happy with everything. We're still not quite league leaders at the moment in the Serie A. That is still AC Milan, who look unstoppable right now. Unbeaten in the league so far. One point above us, though. Roma are four points behind us. And, well, interestingly, we played them in our next game in the Serie A. So that should be interesting. Juventus, though, are starting to fall off and dropping points. Even more interesting. And look at this, guys. Our next couple of games in the Serie A, Roma and Juventus. Now, we're going to have a few important weeks in this series coming up. For now, though, it's all about that Champions League. Now, last episode, we picked up a famous win over Real Madrid. A 90th minute winner coming from Alexis Sanchez. And here we are again playing Madrid, this time at the Bernabeu. Things are going to be a lot more heated here. But we're going to try and go for the win. I'm literally going with my strongest possible 11 for this one. Yes, we have a few fitness concerns, particularly Skriniar, but... We're just going to have to run with it. I mean, we're playing Real Madrid. I need my best players on the pitch. And besides that, we've got a four-day gap between now and that Roma game. So it just makes sense to do so. Looking at Real Madrid, no Sergio Ramos. I think they've sold him. Their attack consists of Benzema, Rodrigo, Hazard. Midfield of Modric, Cruz. It's the standard Madrid 11 everybody is used to. We beat them last episode. Let's see if we can do it again. You know what, guys? If we actually end up beating Real Madrid here... There is a very good chance we could actually finish top of the group. In fact, we will because, yeah, Shakhtar aren't going to compete with us. And so aren't Gladbach. So if we can somehow pull this off, that'll be epic. Uh, Real Madrid utilizing their width really well. It's Eden Hazard on the charge here for them. I'm tracking his run with Skriniar. Still Hazard brings it inside for Tony Cruz. Can we put a challenge in? No, we can't still Cruz. The cross comes in, it's a good one, but Pau Torres, no nonsense defending, clears it away. Real Madrid do find themselves with a corner. We're not really good with set pieces, and Hazard got there ahead of the defender there, but we do survive that. Oh, Eriksen with the roulette, brilliant. Cut back for Lukaku, he couldn't get ahead of the defender. Christian Eriksen with a magical moment to roulette the defender. Lukaku had to be more strong there, that's a big chance gone. Real Madrid on the front foot here. Cruz with the cross. It's a good ball. What? Is that an own goal? Nah, man. That's, that's not the way you want to concede. This was just bad luck. Like, come on. The cross came and I thought my defender had it covered. Instead, he bounced the ball off Benzema. Look at this, guys. What was my defender doing? Why didn't he head it away? Does that goal go for Benzema? It does. Benzema scores a dodgy goal there. That was awful. We're 1-0 down against Madrid and not the way you want to concede. Oh, that's frustrating. And now Rodrigo has gotten in behind. The momentum has shifted now in this one as it's the Brazilian looking for a cross. Can my defenders head the ball away? Benzema has just scored a couple of goals in four minutes. And my defenders are just not clearing the ball. I don't know how Skriniar didn't head the ball away there. Real Madrid 2 into Milan nil. This is the last thing we needed. Oh god, we were actually the better team in the first 30 minutes and suddenly we're 2-0 down. Oh, it's gonna be a big, long 90 minutes. Barella, good pass for Lukaku. Now it's Hakimi who's gotten in behind. Still Hakimi looks for the pass back in. Oh, Lautaro Martinez with a brilliant finish there. Hakimi may not have scored from that attack, but he assisted that and was just as responsible as Lautaro Martinez for the goal. Lovely finish from the Argentine. We get one back and that puts us right back into this game. Good finish right there from Lautaro. I mean, he had to put that one right in the bottom left corner and that's exactly what he did. A lovely finish. And well, we're back in it. Halftime against Madrid. It's not been a good performance from us, but to be fair, it has. Like, we've created chances. It's just two moments of, you know, lack of concentration maybe or mistakes we've made that's cost us. 
I still feel like we can make a comeback in this game and let's hope for that in the second half. Madrid on the front foot with Luka Modric. That is a phenomenal pass for Benzema. Oh my god, incredible goalkeeping from Handanovic. That is a phenomenal save and Benzema could have had his hat trick there. We got super lucky with that one. Oh, Real Madrid just keep the pressure up. Chance for Benzema who's gotten in behind. He keeps it in. But Skriniar helps get the ball away. But the pressure is incredible from Madrid. Thankfully, Pau Torres is able to win that one. And on the break, we finally broken through the Madrid press. We could do something about it. Nah, the pass just wasn't good enough for Lautaro. Real Madrid have kept all the possession in the second half. It's actually really annoying. We do win that, but their pressure has been just incredible as they win the ball again. Modric, Benzema. Nah, that is just, that is just wrong. How did Handanovic not collect that ball? Where was the handling there? He literally parried that one right for Benzema and Benzema gets his hat-trick. Like, three individual mistakes and we've conceded three times here. Like, look at this. How did Handanovic not collect the ball there? That was just awful. And he just literally gave the goal right to Benzema and it's 3-1 for Real Madrid and I think it's game done. There is no way we're making a comeback now. It's too late. Oh, 77th minute, Benzema with a hat-trick against us. All of his goals, maybe bar the second one, were crap, like, honestly. Oh, it's frustrating to, like, concede goals like that. Full-time against Madrid, disappointing, man, to let Benzema score a hat-trick like that. We made big mistakes in this one, and that cost us. Benzema takes home the match ball, and I think now Madrid are above us in the Champions League group table. Okay, wow, we've actually dropped down to third spot in the Champions League group stages. This is worrisome. Because of how bad Shakhtar have been, Gladbach have got a lifeline in this group. Wow, this is not good. We've got to be really good in our remaining two games. No slip-ups because there is no way we're not even making it to the knockouts. Nah, nah, nah. I don't want Europa League football. We've got to get the job done in our last two Champions League games. Back to this area we go. Now, we had a great performance against Atalanta in our last game. And let's keep the flow going. Let's bounce back from that defeat to Real Madrid. We now play Roma away. This is going to be a challenge and with Roma being just four points off us, they'll try to win here because if they do, they'll be just a point off us. So they need a win here, but we can, you know, keep pace with AC Milan if we beat them here. Our squad is well rested because we had like a four day gap between this and the previous game against Madrid. So that's awesome. Whereas I think Roma had to endure with Europa League football. That gives us a big advantage. Our first team is ready to go for this one. And I'm ready for this game as well. Inter Milan versus Roma. We're facing a team that are with Dzeko as left striker and Mkhitaryan as striker. That's I'm pretty sure they've like mixed the two players out there. I don't know what they're doing, but we're up against Roma. Let's get right into this one. By the way, guys, I think we failed the Hakimi challenge because, yeah, we couldn't score with him against Madrid. We lost the game as well. So I'm glad there wasn't a forfeit for this challenge. So, yep, we failed this one. Next episode... Let me know any other challenge we should try and attempt in this series. Oh, that is a loose ball for Brozovic as he now looks for Eriksen. Now Romelu Lukaku, can he get the finish in? Big save from the Roma keeper. Lukaku had to score that. That's an early chance wasted for us against a very good Roma side. But gives me a lot of confidence since we're already creating chances against this Roma team. Barella looking for Musa Diaby. This is looking really nice. Still Diaby gets in behind. Could go for the cross. Goes for the cross for Lukaku, of course he's going to score that. Moussa Diaby with the simplest cutback in the world for Romelu Lukaku, who yet again finds the back of the net. Lukaku does what he does best, scores goals, and he just does not stop. Is he one of the top scorers in the Serie I'm very curious to see how many he's scored in the Serie already. After this game, we'll take a look at the top scorers list. Diaby's pace just creates goals on its own. It's that insane. 1-0 up against a very good Roma side, and that is Lukaku's... Sixth goal in the Serie. I'm pretty sure uh, Lautaro Martinez has 10, so he is lagging behind. Looks for Lautaro. Now Romelu Lukaku here. Lukaku's going to use the strength to burst through. Romelu Lukaku drags his shot wide. Oh, could have maybe made it 2-0 there. This is not good news. Barella has picked up a knock, and you guys know it, man. I don't want to take any chances with injuries this season, so we're going to bring off... Varela with Vecino. Already Vidal is injured. I probably should have put Ja Mario on the bench. It would have been useful in this case, but I forgot to do so. Vecino will come on for him. Now it is Christian Eriksen. Eriksen with a chance here. Goes for the chip. Why do I even try that? I should have just fired that one right and it would have probably been a goal. I tried the cheeky attempt and it always backfires. I'm just stupid, man. Should have just gone with a powerful shot. Although Eriksen is once again on the attack here and he could go for goal with his left foot. That didn't work, but Lukaku now 
Again, two shots getting blocked by the Roma defense there. Halftime against Roma, it's been a game of few chances. Like, yeah, it's been a weird one. I think both defenses have been really good. But of course, we got the breakthrough with Musa Diaby's run and Lukaku's finish. Let's keep it up. Lautaro finding Musa Diaby. Another cross maybe for Romelu Lukaku. That's a good ball. Lukaku with a powerful header. Romelu Lukaku in the box is just one of the most dominant players I've used in career mode. It's honestly crazy. Diaby with his second assist the game. How influential Diaby has become to this team. He's made that left wing or left mid spot his own. I think the injury to Perisic has really helped Diaby because now he's consistently playing in that position. He knows what to do. He knows his job is to put in the deliveries for Lukaku and Lautaro. This was a perfect ball and Lukaku makes it 2-0 against Roma. One goal from Roma and they will be back in it and they've got the firepower to score. Pedro looks inside for Mkhitaryan. That's a big save from Handanovic. He's had a very mixed episode. He's made mistakes, but he's also made some really good saves. That was another one of his good saves. Carlos Perez. One goal for Roma and they'll be back in it. We need to be careful about that. Here we go on the break though. Lautaro looks for Lukaku. Who's going to try... Oh my god. What is going on with Lautaro and Lukaku? Where's their chemistry gone in this game? They're literally crashing into each other. Gradually sub off Lautaro for Alexis Sanchez for the rest of this game. Might also give Diaby a bit of a rest because we're lacking that left winger with Perisic out injured. So... That's the play. There you go, full time against Roma. This wasn't your super eventful game, but it was just a casual game. We had to work hard, but we got it done. And it's a convincing win, a clean sheet as well for us against Roma. Let's see if AC Milan have dropped any points. It's only a bruised elbow for Nicolo Barella, which is absolutely fantastic. In fact, it works in our favor because he won't be going for any international duty. And he'll just be able to rest up until the Juventus game. So he's not going to miss any football for us. And let's go, guys. AC Milan have dropped points. We're top of the league right now. What I cannot understand is how bad Juventus are. They're literally eight points off us. It's kind of realistic because Juventus in real life have been off as well. But we're a point clear of AC Milan. They've drawn another game. They're still unbeaten though in the Serie A, which is just bonkers. Next game against Juventus, if we win that, I think we're title favourites, especially considering how weak Juventus have been this season. Top scorers in the Serie A, Lautaro Martinez is on his own with 10. Cristiano Ronaldo with 8 just behind him. Good to see Lukaku climbing up the ladder slowly but surely. He's on 7 as well, so it's Martinez and Lukaku carrying us in terms of goals. Assist-wise, we don't have a single player in the top 10, I think. We've got Lukaku with 3. That is very interesting, guys. Is Diaby even there? Hakimi is there with three, but Diaby isn't. Oh, Diaby is there with three as well. So, very interesting that none of our players are in the top five, top six for assists. Player of the episode for me in this one has to be between Lukaku or Diaby. Diaby's assists were superb, but Lukaku practically scored in every game we played and was so consistent. Your decision to make, of course. Next episode, Juventus in Serie A. We're up against Cristiano Ronaldo and that should be a lot of fun. Champions League heating up as well. Oh, that's going to be fun because, yeah, Shakhtar, Borussia Gladbach. We're going to find out our future in the Champions League, whether we make it out alive from our group or not. So that should be fun as well. But if you guys are enjoying this Inter Milan series, I'd really appreciate if you could drop like in the video, subscribe if you're new around here. And well, I'll catch you all next time.